Hey guys, welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today we're going to discuss the current state of mob switches in the game. Since yesterday I got a couple of questions, how feasible it is to run a large flying machine like the world eater here in normal survival while you're getting attacked by gas. So first I would not recommend to run or build any large flying machine in normal survival mode while there is a chance of getting attacked by gas. But luckily there's a mechanic in vanilla Minecraft that you can use in order to prevent your normal gas spawning. So first I'm going to give a brief summary how mob spawning in Minecraft works and how you could use it. First you need to know about the mob cap that prevents that the game is overrun by spawning mobs. So if you have more than 70 hostile mobs in your loaded area, then the game stops spawning new ones. There's also a separate mob cap for animals, ambient mobs, so bats basically, and water mobs, squid and fish. Alright, so at the moment I disabled mob spawning, 0 of the 70 slots are filled. You can use carpet mod to display that. If you now enable mob spawning, then the mob cap will be immediately filled. So 66, 72, didn't take long and now we got yeah 71 hostile mobs in the world. So you can see a couple of them above ground, most of them are probably in caves. Yeah, some of them will despawn and if there's space under the mob cap again, then new ones will spawn. The concept of a mob switch is to keep that hostile mob cap filled all the time with mobs in a separate area and prevent new mobs spawning somewhere else. So one obvious approach to achieve that would be to use the spawn chunks for that. Just have some hostile mobs in the main area, leave through a nether portal, go somewhere else and those mobs would count towards the mob cap. Unfortunately, after a while they would also despawn with the normal despawning algorithm. Right, then maybe another idea to prevent them from despawning would be to use name tags. But this obvious exploit doesn't work because mobs that have been renamed don't count towards the mob cap anymore. So we can also check that out again. Now we got one mob, the mob cap, rename him, zero again. This also doesn't work to throw the yeah, zombie some items because yeah, mobs that would pick up items also don't despawn, but they also don't count towards the mob cap. There are a couple of other hostile mobs in the game that also don't despawn. Every witch hut comes with a witch inside that can't despawn. Unfortunately, that witch also doesn't count towards the mob cap. One mechanic that has been used in the past to make mob switch was the fact that hostile mobs wouldn't despawn in lazy chunks. But unfortunately, that's no longer the case since the 1.15.2 update. So to briefly explain the lazy chunks, there's a certain number of chunks around the spawn point, indicated here by the diamond pillar, where yeah, animals or mobs would completely work regularly, so animals would wander around, items in a water stream would get moved, but there's also a slice of chunks on the outside of the spawn chunks where entities aren't processed anymore, but mobs would still count towards the mob cap. So we used it in the past, just got a couple of, for example, yeah, zombies or skeletons from a spawner, put them into the lazy chunks of the spawn chunks, left the area, then we're good, no more mob spawning elsewhere. But unfortunately this doesn't work anymore, mobs in the lazy chunks would now despawn. So we can try that out, I'm gonna put zombie in there, or two, you can see, we got two at the mob cap. Now we leave through a nether portal, because that prevents the mobs from despawning. Then we go over a couple hundred of blocks to the next nether portal, so thousands of blocks in the overworld. There's the portal, and yeah, unfortunately those mobs have been despawned. So this yeah, easy setup to make a mob switch doesn't work anymore. There are still ways to make a hostile mob switch, but the fact that mobs in lazy chunks are despawning now also means that I currently don't know any way to make a bat and water mob switch. The way to still make a hostile mob switch is to use special mobs that count towards the mob cap but also don't despawn. So at the moment I know three of those mobs that would work, but they're rather tricky to handle one exception that got added recently. So the first one is the wizard boss. At the moment there's zero hostile mobs in the game and I'm gonna spawn it. Now we got one. And yeah, of course, you know, the wizard doesn't despawn, but it's also quite tricky to handle. All right, one of the mobs that in previous versions of the game had the same trait was the elder guardian. But it's still that one hostile mob in the game. So it seems like elder guardians also lost yeah, the ability to be part of a mob switch. Okay, then luckily there's still another one, the Schalke. It also still counts towards the mob cap, 
but of course it's really hard to get them. So Shulkers can spawn in the end cities. In order to bring them to the overworld, you need to put in quite a lot of effort. We did it actually on a Cycraft server. We brought over 600 Shulkers from end cities to our overworld area to make a mob switch. But this was quite a lot of work. The reason why we have 600 Shulkers on the Cycraft server is that the mob cap gets adjusted on a multiplayer server depending on the number of players and the area loaded by those players. So now we got a second account on. If we move away, then as you can see the mob cap increases. So if you stand in the same chunk with multiple players, then the mob cap would still be 70. If we are completely in different areas, for our own area loaded, then we have just twice the mob cap. If you have 10 players on completely separate areas, then the mob cap would be 700. Since the first 1.16 snapshot, there's also a new mob in the game that doesn't despawn, but counts towards the mob cap. And it's something, yeah, if you read through the patch notes, you might have noticed immediately, there's a bug fix, villagers that have been infected by a zombie can despawn even if they have been traded with. So we got the zombie villagers that no longer can despawn. Now the only question is, of course, will they count towards the mob cap? Okay, let's see. So here we have a villager. We're gonna trade for some leather pants. That's been traded with. Then let's get a zombie. In hard difficulty, there's a 100% chance that villagers that are killed by a zombie will be converted to zombie villagers. At the moment, we got one hostile mob in the game. And now we have two. So in theory, if the bug got fixed that those guys would despawn, you should have a permanent mob now in the game that also counts towards the mob cap. Let's try that. Just gonna move a couple hundred blocks away. So the outside of the 128 block range of the player. The mobs usually immediately despawn. And yeah, we still got one hostile mob in the game. So that means this would be the obvious choice for a mob switch now. But I am rather certain that this exploit will be fixed. Be way too easy. So in order to make a proper mob switch, we can turn mob spawning on and off. Because, for example, if you want to run a mob farm, you definitely want to have some mob spawning. You probably will bring your shikers or the zombie villager thing, if it still works, to the edge of the spawn chunks. So you can move them between loaded area and non-loaded area. So here we are at the border of a chunk. If the shiker is inside, then it counts towards the mob cap. If you power the piston and push him out, then it doesn't count towards the mob cap anymore. Because your actual mob switch probably also needs to prevent the shikers from teleporting. That's really not the point of the video now to show you a fully working system because we're still in the snapshots and yeah, mob switches change all the time. It's not an intended game mechanic. It's really useful and actually a really fun mechanic because if you play this game for quite a lot and put in a lot of hours in order to get a mob switch, you've definitely earned it. It's definitely a fun mechanic and a nice end game goal. And as a possible location where you can build your mob switch would be around a portal chunk loading system. I've explained that in a previous video, I can also link that in the video description. So basically what this system does here keeps a certain amount of chunks in the overworld and the desert dimension loaded permanently. Alright, so the idea would be to place your shikers yeah, near that portal system. Probably don't want to have them in the center chunk because they're their entry, entry processing and contribute quite to the lag of the game. So we have hundreds of shikers in this chunk here, this would be quite laggy. But we can just go out to the lazy chunks, so three chunks over, and put our shiker there. Alright, now I'm just gonna fly away from that area, get one hostile mob, that shiker here, currently. But the chunk loading setup will keep it loaded. So I guess that's far enough away. Can also run the game a bit quicker. So this is fine, this won't unload. This also currently works as of the first 1.16 snapshot. If you want, you can also use the wizard boss for the mob switch, since it's probably a bit easier to make a wizard skeleton farm than to bring over, in some cases, hundreds of shikers. For single player, 70 shikers is actually not that bad. You can sometimes find it in two end cities. But if you need hundreds of them, then it's quite tedious. Right, so one approach to use the wizard for mob switch would be to trap him into bedrock, where it's absolutely safe. Uh, you need to find a bedrock formation like this one here in the overworld, which is possible, and then remove all the blocks around it and trap the wizard in there. There are still bedrock removal glitches in the game that allow you to do that. 
There are also battle class concepts that keep a wizard in place, for example, occupy him using villagers, but usually it's quite finicky to deal with a large amount of wizards that isn't 100% safely trapped inside of bedrock. In the nether dimension, it's a bit easier to trap the wizard because there's a lot of available locations, so we can just use the top layer of bedrock and trap the wizard there and remove the blocks below that. And then, of course, build your chunk loading around it. One disadvantage of the current portal chunk loading methods is that after a server restart, um, those need to be loaded once again manually by a player. So if, for example, you have your mob switch 2000 blocks away in the nether, every time you restart a single player world or your server restarts, you need to at least once go there, load the area, and then everything stays loaded. Unfortunately, you can't run a redstone wire anymore through unloaded chunks and activate it this way uh, like you could do in previous versions. Of course, it's also an option to bring shikers or zombie villagers to the nether dimension and use that for a mob switch. Unfortunately, there's no practical way at the moment to keep chunks in the end dimension remotely loaded. Apparently, the first ender dragon that generates with the world has the ability to keep some chunks loaded, but this wouldn't really be practical for mob switch. In case you really need to get rid of mob spawning in the end dimension for a project, you can also put some shikers and minecarts and move them around with a flying machine and bring them your, to your, your project site, for example. Something I actually already did the Cycroft server once. Another option would be, of course, to get a second account and position them next to a lot of shikers, so mob spawning elsewhere in the yeah, world would also be disabled. This might be easier if you have access to multiple accounts. So that's, to my knowledge, the current state of mob switches in the game, but of course the community always keeps developing new ideas and the game is also always changing. This might look a bit different in a couple of months from now on. But I can only repeat myself, making mob switches is super interesting and also a really rewarding end game goal and it's also yeah, necessary for a lot of end game projects. Alright, thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video, bye bye!